Well, I'd like to thank all of you for, for inviting me here uh, uh, and being able to talk about uh, uh, these amazing uh, subject matters. Um, if at any point anybody has a question, please don't hesitate to ask because we'll be covering a lot of material. So I'm glad that nobody here is, uh, is a first timer because, yeah, if, if it's your first time, it would just be like information overload. Uh, but if you do have a question like that, you know, just please uh, raise your hand so that you're not like, okay, you lost me and good morning. <laughs> um, so yeah, so please uh, uh, please ask, uh, ask away. Uh, we're, we'll be having uh, uh, two sessions uh, during this time. Uh, the, this, uh, this first session uh, is going to be on creation, uh, also known as cosmology. And the second one will be on astronomy of the fifth canto. Uh, I guess some devotees know it as the cosmology of the fifth canto, but uh, as, as I was explaining to uh, to CCA, but generally uh, cosmology is a term that physicists uh, refer to when they're talking about creation. Uh, hu people in the humanities they, they 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 use the term cosmogony, but no. No physicist will, will address themselves as I'm a cosmologist. They'll say like I'm a cosmologist and my, my land for cos cosmology, meaning that they're talking about the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. So I'm, that's how I'm going to use the terms here. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, with, with this um, uh, understanding first a little bit about the modern cosmology. I'll go quickly through this because as I understand it, uh, what you really got, want to know is more about the Vedic uh, cosmology. Um, so what is the Big Bang Theory? It's a theory that talks about the origin of the universe, basically uh, how from a singularity um, in space and time there was an expansion of the universe and it came about to be what it is today. Uh, this, the, the theory that drives all of this is Einstein's general theory of relativity, which was published in 1915. And it is a theory about space-time, how space-time gets deformed and it expands and it contracts. Uh, something that some people might not know is that the Big Bang Theory was actually proposed by George Lemaitre, who was, um, he, he was a, a Christian um, a Catholic, uh, cardinal uh, from Belgium, and uh, when he pro first proposed it, people did not like it <laughs> because they were saying, like, "Oh, so you're talking about you know creation, right? You know, like, um, you know uh, Christian creation." We, 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 you know, so they didn't even pay much attention to him until uh, later on. Uh, Edwin Hubble, you you guys have heard of the Hubble telescope, you know, it was named after him. Uh, Edwin Hubble, um, he. he he started looking at, at some uh, data and started noticing that, well, the universe, uh, he said, I believe is expanding. So then it's like, oh, so uh, it gave credence to, to the theory of, of uh, George Lemaitre. Uh, there are four um, evidences beside, um, including the expansion of the universe, that um, reiterate the, the, the fact that uh, the Big Bang uh, is a very probable uh, way of looking at how the universe started. I won't go into each one of these because it's very technical, uh, but I uh, just want to let you know that uh, there are you know, evidences that um, allow us to believe that uh, this theory of the Big Bang has some validity to it. However, uh, it doesn't explain everything. There are uh, unsolved mysteries, like I don't know if you've heard of dark energy and dark matter, so dark energy is the um, is this idea that well, we are we're seeing that the universe is expanding, right? So what is what is that energy that is pushing, you know, that is making that expansion? We have no idea, so we call it dark energy. So that is dark energy. Uh, on the other hand, we also see like uh, these uh, galaxies, right, that are rotating. And what happens uh, when you when you are rotating? When you have things that are rotating? Uh, especially uh, those of you who've been in Kirtan and you've been holding on to somebody and you're spinning around, what, what do you feel at that point? Oh, weightlessness. Weightlessness and especially, uh, yeah? You, you want to be pushed out, right? There's uh, this force that, that, that is wanting to, to, to push you out. So, 
that uh, that galaxies also feel it when when they're when they're rotating like that. Now you have to have a certain amount of mass in it so that the gravitational forces keep everything together. Otherwise, everything will fall away. What they're seeing is that there is not enough mass from their from their observations to keep the galaxies together. They say like th this should be every, all these galaxies should be flying around. So why isn't that happening? Well, there must be some type of matter there. What type of matter? Well, nothing that we know. So we call it dark matter. So these are two like big questions in um, in um, astrophysics nowadays. In fact, they, it is said that ninety percent of the matter of the universe is dark matter, and it does not emit light or interact with any normal. Uh, but besides these questions, there are actually problems with the Big Bang Theory. Uh, namely, the horizon problem, the flatness problem, and the magnetic moment rules. Uh, just like, uh, like previously, uh, as I mentioned, these, these are very technical, but I will just talk about one of them because uh, it will be uh, important for one of the points that I'm going to make later. Uh, in this vignette, you see, trying to describe the size of the Big Bang. So what is this flatness problem? It, uh, it deals with the future of the universe, right? The geometry of the universe uh, is um, the type which dictates whether the universe will expand forever or collapse. Basically, we have three different types of, of uh, possibilities. Either the universe has this um, geometry which is flat, in which case it will just keep uh, expanding out normally, or it will have uh, this, this um, uh, hyperbolic curvature, in which case it will go really fast until forever. And uh, in both of these scenarios, the, the fate of the universe will be such that uh, at some point in the future, all the galaxies will be so far away and everything will become super cold and everything will die. On the other hand, you have this, uh, this other geometry, which is uh, positive uh, geometry. Uh, in, in that one, the universe will expand up to a certain critical point and then collapse back into what they call the big crunch. Which of these is the geometry of our universe? Well, we don't know exactly. But uh, it is very close to this critical density. We don't know whether it's which one of the three, because if, if you notice, it, it, it all depends on this parameter, omega which has to be one. If it's less than one, it's this here. If it's more than one, it's over there. So it seems to be like very, you know, why, why is it so close to this critical density? We don't know, that's, that's why, why it's called the flatness problem. Uh, the Big Bang cannot, uh, cannot really uh, describe why. Uh, so we have something called, uh, you know, an add-on theory, which is called the inflation. I don't know if you have heard about it. It's not the monetary inflation. Uh, it's, the, it's this idea that the universe expanded exponentially during the first fractions of a second after the Big Bang. So uh, this, this theory uh, takes care of the horizon, flatness, and magnetic moment force problems. And it also explains why the universe that we have at a large scale is not uniform, but it has, you know, like, it is like spotted here and there with galaxies and um, all around. But it also has problems of its own. <coughs> it requires extremely specific initial conditions of its own. Uh, the inflation field does not correspond to any known physical field. And uh, its potential energy curve seems to be an ad hoc contrivance uh, that you know, can fit almost any, any data that you want. Scientific American even talk about it like quantum gaps in the Big Bang theory. So what what do we have that um, be, beyond that? We have certain theories that go beyond uh, what we are at this moment able to confirm. So maybe you have heard about some of these, like the oscillating universe. It's the idea that the universe expands and contracts, expands and contracts, and uh, from minus infinity to infinity. This is called the oscillating universe. There is also uh, the idea of uh, eternal inflation, in which the universe is expanding 
constantly. It never stopped expanding exponentially. But certain pockets of the universe stopped expanding. And these are what we call universes. <laughs> Ours would be just like this very small local region of, of this big universe that stopped expanding. And there are other regions that may also be like that. And, there are, uh, and they, they have their own different uh, physics in, in each one. So that's called the eternal inflation. And then, uh, just in general, uh, the parallel universes. Uh, here's a vignette for that. What if your life is boring in all of the parallel universes? <laughs> now this brings some philosophical questions, as like, uh, is cosmology a science, first of all? You know, can, can you, uh, are the laws of nature, con you know, you, you can ask, are the laws of, uh, are the laws of nature constant? Uh, is what we see a good sample of the universe? Is the universe testable? This is what makes uh, science Science, right? The, the scientific method. Uh, so we don't really have that in cosmology, do we? So can we call it a science? Uh, then we have a question is like, well, what is the universe expanding into, right? So we talked about how, yeah, right now here's a universe that is expanding, but what if that black stuff around, right? So if, if the universe has all of space in it, and all of time in it, then what is that black thing, right? Well, there are responses. One is, don't ask. Your question doesn't make sense. You will, you will see some, some, uh, some scientists saying that. Uh, basically saying, well, every, space is space, and you shouldn't think about that there is anything beyond it like that. It's just expanding as itself. It is like asking, what is north of the North Pole? Well, by definition, the North Pole is the North Pole, but you can't say what's north of it. So they'll give you that kind of response. It's like, eh. So some people like that. Some people don't like that response. Um, another one is, well, it's expanding into the multiverse. <laughs> then there are other questions. And it's like, what happened before or what caused the Big Bang? Right? Well, you also get the uh, response, well, don't ask your question, does it make sense? Again, like, what is north of the North Pole? Time started with the Big Bang. You can't ask what, what is be before it. So you'll have that. But then uh, you also have other people saying, well, the laws of nature, quantum vacuum, created everything. Right? Uh, here, here's a vignette for that. 13.8 billion years ago, a few seconds before the creation of the universe. All set, let's fire this large hadron particle glider and see what happens. Another, another um, response that they can give you for you know, what happened or what caused the Big Bang is, um, well, th this is the, the, the quantum vacuum. In, um, you know, basically, like, from the quantum vacuum, like, there are oscillations. And these oscillations, one of them turned out to be a universe that expanded. Parallel universes it, uh, have been existing all along, so it's not. So what happened before the Big Bang? Well, there are so many other Big Bangs, so many other universes, you know. So that's what happened. What is Hawking's view of the Big Bang? This is one of the questions that that, that, uh, that um, is, is is asked in, in, in these exams. It's asked this time actually. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there are two proposals. There is the one that uh, was most uh, and is most well known, which is the Hartle Hawking proposal, and then there is this one, the Hertog Hawking proposal, which was the, the last paper that, uh, that that he published. So um, let me just quickly talk about the two of them. Uh, the Hartle Hawking proposal, which is the most well known, is this idea that Hawking had with uh, Hartle that. If you go back in time, you know, for at some point, you know, when you're getting near to the to, to the to the beginning, uh, space and time starts uh, just like mixing around each other, you know, because you can you can fold it like that, and and at some point, uh, time gives way to just space, 
And so what you have here is just space. And it ends up in, in sort of like a, like a sphere. So you never have a beginning because uh, to have a beginning, you have to have time. And there is no time in, in here. So he basically does away with the question of what was there in the beginning. Um, that, that, was, that was his idea, and there was no singularity because it's just you know very you know it's it's round, so there's no, no no singularity at the end. So that was his his idea, basically doing away with the idea of uh, of, of time or a beginning. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the, this is the the the, the, the idea of uh, of a singularity that everything just collapses into a single. This is what he wanted to take away, the idea of, uh, of a singularity. Now, the Hertog Hawking proposal uh, is something similar, uh, and it, but it, um, it tries to do it in, in a different way. The Hawking had a problem with the idea of eternal inflation. He did not like eternal inflation. He said that um, the values of certain key physical constants could vary very randomly between uh, universes, as, as, I, as I mentioned you earlier. We have pocket universes here and there, and each one has its own physical constants. So that means totally different uh, laws of physics. If that is the case, then uh, the problem is that the theory becomes untestable, right? You know the f physics and that for this universe, but you know who knows what happens in, in other places. So. Uh, if a theory becomes untestable, then you can't, you know, that's the end. Uh, it's not science anymore. So what Hertog and Hawking did is that they used a certain technique in which, uh, that's called holography, uh, in which they projected out time. So then they were dealing only with space at the very beginning of time. Again, just, just the idea of, of space. Uh, as a result of this, they ended up with uh, instead of having a multiverse with these infinite fractal structure like that, you get just a finite and simpler universe that emerges from eternal inflation. <coughs> the big question that comes then is if theory starts, if the, if the theorists start with a theory that only has spatial dimensions, how does it time finally emerge from it? They go like, well, something to, to think about in the future. But they, they, these are the, the ideas of, of uh, Hawking and, uh, and Herzog. Now, some people may say, like, well, why don't you just put God in, into, into the picture, and then and this will solve all the problems. Mm, it's not so easy. Because, uh, you know, the, the idea that what if God created the Big Bang, that's called the cosmological argument. And uh, the responses to this have been, have been well, God just pushes back the question, well, who created God? So it's not very satisfactory in that sense. And then the other question is that, well, how can the parameters of the universe be so finely tuned to produce life? That is the teleological argument, right? Um, that, 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 that comes up. This, this one appears here in, uh, in uh, cosmology, and it also appears in uh, uh, evolutionary theory, right? The, the idea of... Uh, purpose. Well, the way that they uh, explain it is, well, in the, in the multiverse, our universe just happens to have all the right conditions of, for life. All the other universes, you know, they're not finely tuned. Ours just statistically happen to be the one that allowed all of the, all of the right conditions to be there, and that's why we are here to, to uh, see it. So these are the responses to, uh, to saying, like, well, let's just put God in. 